Welcome to our Through the Bible study here on Bible In-Depth Network with Alex. In our study, we look at the context of Scripture and how it applies to our daily lives. We also believe that there's no limitation to the revelation of the Word God. Let's study together today. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you for joining us for our live broadcast. I hope you're safe. I hope the Lord has kept you safe and sound. This is a day that the Lord has met. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. Thank you for everybody that is joining us from across the world, from whichever part of the world that you are joining in. We thank God for you. We thank you uh, for taking time to join us uh, for our time of prayer our time of worship, and uh, I believe that God will do great things for us, even in this time. And uh, I hope you had a good day. I hope the Lord has blessed you, and the Lord has prospered you uh, today. I hope there are things that you've been hoping for, and that God has brought them to realization. In this world we live in, we have to always believe in God, always have hope that good things shall happen to us. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. Though sometimes it looks too bad, it looks impossible, it looks heavy, it looks like there's a huge price to pay, but then we also remember that God is with us and God loves us. And that is the confidence that I carry every single day. And I know even you who is listening to me today, that is confidence you carry with you, that God will help you, that God will save you, that God will come out uh, for you. So I just want to ask you to always have hope and believe in God, that great things will happen. And indeed, he will see that come uh, to 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 happen, come to pass with us. Now, we are studying the book of Matthew, and uh, we are on chapter 24 of this book of Matthew. And I want us to take some time to study, and then we shall pray and uh, worship God before we close. And... Uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, you can also follow through whichever version that you have. And uh, I want us to study today. We ended on verse 14 of this book of Matthew. And today I want us to continue with verse 15. Jesus at this point is talking about the end that is to come. There is confusion today, people wondering whether there is actually that end, whether it will actually come, because as days go by, we forget that he said in his word that he will return. As days go by, we forget and take life as usual. But if he has taken a while to come, it does not imply that he will not come. Jesus can come today. Jesus can return this night while you are sleeping. He can return the next minute as I'm speaking and the next minute is here because he said he will return. And that's a fact. So Jesus in verse 20, in chapter 24 is talking to his disciples and he's telling them uh, about uh, the end that is to come. And he's speaking to them about this end that is to come. And he says in verse 15, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. This abomination of desolation is most likely an image or a statue that is planted in the holy place. And when you read through history of Israel, 
this was done actually over the years, even uh, from the death of Jesus, even when the apostles are dead and gone. Uh, from those that came on following in the leadership, uh, you found uh, such things happening, putting images to be worshipped and statues to be worshipped of other gods. These are, of course, abominations as far as Israel is concerned. But then it is spoken of through Daniel, the prophet. And uh, it says, when you see that coming to pass, flee to the mountains. And it says, whoever is on the housetop must not go down to get the things that are in his house. And he says, whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his clock. But what to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days? And he says, but pray that your flight will not be in the winter, all on a Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation, such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Jesus is telling us here that this is going to be a tough time. It's going to be a frightening time. It will be a moment that will make the earth shake. It will make people shake. They will be afraid. The return of Christ is not some simple uh, occurrence, if I may use that. It involves things that we have not seen, as we shall keep on reading. But he says there will be a great tribulation. One that has not been seen since the beginning of the world. Now, if you go through the beginning of the world, you might think the Israelites, because he's talking to them now, these are Jews. When they were in Egypt, they received such a great torture. Oh, they suffered so greatly. You will think that in the time they were in captivity, yeah, when they were taken by the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar, they had such a terrible time. So it was bad. You would think tribulation or suffering that has occurred with the people of God has been too bad. But Jesus is telling them, you are going to see and witness something that has not happened since the beginning of the world. And he adds, and it will never happen again. And he says, verse 22, unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. The tribulation period that we are seeing and that we are going to go through is not going to be easy. It's not easy. Because some of us are maybe waiting for the tribulation, but it's already started. It already started. Actually, when Jesus is talking here, he's telling them that this is going to happen. And actually, it happened starting from the time when Jesus is gone up to today. Tribulation. This tribulation has been happening. And it's ongoing. And he says, for the sake of the elect, for the sake of the people of God, the time or the days should be cut short because if this tribulation goes too long, we may not find anybody saved. So, is there something greater that is still coming? Clearly, yes. There are other moments that are coming and I have to brace myself as a believer, as a Christian. I have to be ready because there are tougher days ahead. It's tough that is coming. That which is coming is tough. And he says, Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ. All there he is. Do not believe him. There are people today who are calling themselves Christ. There are people today who are telling you that I am the Christ. We read in the papers. We see on the news. Everywhere people are talking about Christ. A Christ here. That has come. Jesus says, if you hear such people, do not believe him. Reason, as we shall read later, the return of Christ is quite more evident. Okay? It is quite more clear that everybody shall have to witness it and see it. You do not have to 
uh, come out and say it that he, he, Christ is here. No, it will be evident. So if anybody is coming out to say that they are Christ, then they are liars. Then they are not right. And you should not believe them. For false Christs, verse 24, and false prophets will arise. This is Jesus speaking. He's telling me and you, false Christs, those who say they are Christ, and false prophets, those who are prophets, who are liars, because you know, in the world we live in today, there are so many prophets. Everybody has a word to say. Everybody has seen something. Everybody has got a revelation about you. But some are false. Remember that you will have those that are genuine and they're not false prophets. But then you'll also have those who are false. And that is where it requires my discernment to know this person who is speaking to me. Are they a prophet of God? Or they are a false prophet. Because Jesus says in his word that these will arise. And they will show great signs and wonders. That is the amazing thing. Jesus is saying, even if they are false, by some power, by some spiritual power, they shall manifest in great signs and great wonders. Friends, the power of God shall do great signs and wonders for you. But then there are also people who do not use the power of God. And they use a separate power. They use another power. Another spiritual power of evil to do great signs and wonders. These great signs and wonders that we see, that we call on, that we want, that we we die for, even today we need to be careful where are we picking them from. Because some of the places that we are picking these are from the source of hell itself. So I've got to know that not every place, not every man that performs signs and wonders is performing by the power of the Almighty God. Because Jesus is saying to us that this will be done by false prophets, by false Christs. So they will come out and do whatever they do with another power. I want you to know that miracles, signs, and wonders should never lead you astray. Signs and wonders should never be a reason you're joining a particular ministry. Signs and wonders should not be the major driving force for your life as a believer because they can be faked. Yeah? They can be conjured up. They can actually even be performed by evil powers. Not to say that the real does not exist. Because for the fake to come, then there has to be a real. For you to have a duplicate or uh, a fake, then there is an original. If you have to get a counterfeit, then it means there was an original. Signs, miracles, and wonders exist. Even today, they still exist. Even you who's listening today, you might get your, your miracle today. And it's important for me to know where is it coming from. Because Jesus has warned us about false prophets who will do these great signs and wonders. And the reason they are doing it so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Believers of God have been misled by signs and wonders from the false prophets. Believers and children of God, the elect, have been misled. And you see somebody, they've served God for years, they've worshipped God for years, been a Christian for years, and then a wave just comes and it drives you off your feet and leads you astray. Jesus warns about, about this. But he says, behold, I have told you in advance. So be alert, I have told you in advance. Do not be lied to. That's what Jesus is saying here. So he says in verse 26, so, verse 26, so if they said to you, behold, he's in the wilderness, 
do not go out. He's saying if they are telling you this Christ is in the wilderness, do not go out. Oh, behold, he's in the inner rooms. Do not believe them. Because people are going to do that. They are going to say that. Yet they are going to be lying. So he says, if they are telling you, come, come and we show you where he is. We have seen him. They are lying. Do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse sees, the vultures will gather. So, just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. When there is lightning out there, everyone sees it. Even when you've not been focused and there is lightning, you see it and you say, there is lightning. Jesus says that is how he will return. Everyone will see it. They won't have to call you to see it. You will see it. You will know it. Every single person on earth will witness the return of Christ. Every single person on earth will see him come. He will see him come. So when they are telling you that come and see he's in this room, they are lying. You will see him. You will see him when he's coming. And he says in verse 29, but immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of heaven will be shaken. There are a number of things here to note. The sun will be darkened. Have you ever seen the sun darkened? I'm not talking about this eclipse that we see here. We've had one recently. The sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky. And the powers of heaven will be shaken. These things are happening at the end. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. When such things appear, you know, there are some of us who say, okay, I'll wait for that moment. That is when I will believe. I'll wait for that moment. That is when I will repent. I'll wait for that day. That is when I will say, okay, I live all the life, the past life. And now I believe in you. Receive. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. So some, some people may be waiting for the sun to darken to call on the name of Jesus. Some people are waiting for the moon not to give its light to say, I, I believe now. Some people will be waiting for the stars to fall from the, star, from the sky and the powers of heaven to shake for them to come out and say, okay, from now on, I live the past life and I am a believer. It's very unfortunate, but that may not happen. Just the shock of everything that is ongoing. We've not witnessed any of this before. You just imagine when stars are falling from the sky. When you read uh, about the galaxies, which are billions of galaxies, and the billions of stars in each galaxy, when they're saying that stars are falling from the sky and coming down, those are billions of stars that are falling. And stars, by the way, because they are too far from us, they are bigger than the sun itself. So you're having huge, huge elements falling from the sky and hitting the ground. That may not be a simple time for you to remember that it is time for you to repent. There's so much that will be going on. That's why I do it now. And I walk with Christ now. And I do his will now. And I walk with him now. And I do what he tells me now. I do not wait for the last minute. Those who say that I'll wait for the last minute then repent. That may not be possible. Because immediately after this has happened and the skies are down and the powers of heaven are shaking. Then the sign of the son of man will appear in the sky. <laughs> we will see him return in glory. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. 
and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. That is the time that the earth will realize, that people will realize we are afraid. The Christians were right. That is the time where everybody now will start to say, he's there. It's not been a lie. It did not it was not made up. After the these things that he says have happened, and everybody's looking up in the sky, the Bible says the tribes of the earth will mourn. You wonder why they are not happy. It's because the greatest majority will not believe in him. And I don't want to be part of those who have not believed in him. I don't want to be part of those who have not believed in him because this is not an experience that I want to be on the other side. And he says, and he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. As all this drama is happening, I'll call it drama. Because surely it will be drama. Not paid for. Free to watch. When all this is happening, Jesus says, He will send forth His angels and say, I have those who believed in me. I have those who walked with me. I have those who said, I am their Lord and Savior. I have those who made a decision to leave the things of the world, to leave the affairs of the world. I have those who chose me as their Lord and Savior. And he will tell his angels and say, Come, go in all the corners of the earth and gather them. Because those are mine. Those are my children. Those I have come to save. Those who have endured till the end shall be saved that day. And it is amazing because you who's listening to me today, you'll be part of that party. You'll be part of those that will be collected from the four ends, by the four winds, from the, all the corners of the earth. And you'll be gathered together to join Jesus. As the rest of the world is mourning because he's returned, there will be those that are rejoicing because he's returned. And those who will be rejoicing I pray. I seek God. I will do my best that I'm part of them. You too, my friend. You do your best. You'll be the best Christian you can be. So that you're among those who will rejoice. Do not be part of those who mourn that day. Be part of those who rejoice. And that day... The most unfortunate thing is we do not know when it will be. We have no idea when that day will be. Because it can be today. It can be tonight. It can be five minutes from now. It can be an hour from now. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? If the moon fails now and the stars drop now, are you ready when the Son of Man is seen by everybody in the skies in the next five minutes? If it happened, would you be ready? Would you be ready? There's somebody out there who's listening to me And probably you had not given it thought. Probably you had thought, ah, there's still so much time. I can't do it any time. I'll do it next year. I'll do it five years from now when I've had quite some fun. 
when I've enjoyed all the clubs that there are. There's a person out there today. And this is your day. And you just need to accept Jesus today as your Lord and Savior. And walk with him. And let him guide you. And let him be your guide. There is somebody that is out there today. This is your moment. Take it. Because he can come tonight. Take it. Because he can come tomorrow. And even if he has not come tonight or tomorrow, it will still be good for you to live the rest of the life you have as a believer. Honoring God. Doing the best you can do. Serving him. Being the best you can be. Do it today. Because the time might come and it will be too late. So if you're that person and you're out there, before we get into prayer, you can say these words. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Help me walk with you. Help me serve you. Amen. In this new journey, may God help you. May God help you. May God help you. He will help you. He will stand with you. And for the rest of us, let us pray that we stand. Let us pray that we stand for Christ. Let us pray that we hold on to this faith that we do not falter in this moment. Father in heaven, Help us, your children. Help us, O Father. Help us do your will, O Father. Help us stand for you, King of glory. Help us do that which brings honor to you. Because the day is coming and we know it. And we do not want to be caught off guard. Help us stand for you each and every day. Help me be the Christian that I've got to be. Help me be the Christian that I am meant to be. Help me be that person, Lord of heaven, that shall always serve you. That shall always honor you. Come on, tell God. Talk to him now. Talk to him now and seek his help. Talk to him now and tell him to help you. Tell him to help you in these tough times. In these tough days, tell him to help you. Tell him. Tell him, Lord, I need you to help me. I need you to help me walk with you. I need you to help me stand for you. I need you to help me do your will, O oh God. Because I know that it is only by your grace that I can stand. May your grace abide, O oh God. May your mercy abide, O oh God, in my life. That I will do your will each and every day. That I will be the best person that I can be. That I will be the best Christian that I can be. Help me, Lord. For I do not want to be deceived. Save me, Lord, from the hands of false prophets. Help me, Lord, and pluck me out of false doctrine, O God. And pluck me out of false teachings, O God. And pluck me out of false fellowships, O God. Help me, O God, that I will do your will. Help me, Lord, that I'll have a spirit of discernment. Fill me with discernment. Give me the spirit, Lord, to know the right and the wrong. To know the miracles that are right and those that have been done to mislead. Because, dear Lord, I don't want to be misled. 
And the only way that will happen is if I stick with you. Is if I walk with you. Is if I do your will. Is if I stand for you, mighty God. I want to stand for you at all times, O God. I want to stand for you at all times, O God. I want to stand for you each and every day, O God. Tell him that you want to stand for him. Tell him that you want to stand for him. Tell him to help you stand for him because it's not by power or might. It is by the grace of God. It is by his spirit that we shall do. It is by his spirit that we shall do. We need you, Abba Father. We need you, Abba Father. We need you, Abba Father. We need you, King of Glory. We need you, Excellent God. We need you, Jehovah. We need you to help us. For our hope is nowhere else but in you alone. My help cometh from you, O God. My eyes look to you, O God. They look to you for sustenance. They look to you for peace. They look to you for hope. I look to you, O God. Tell him I look to you, O God. I look to you to help me, O God. I look to you to help me, O God. Tell him I look to you, O God, to help me. Help me in my life. Help me, Lord, as I struggle through life. Help me. Help me, Lord, and heal my disease. Help me, Lord, and heal my disease. For those that have been sick for long, Ask God right now to heal you and he will heal you. Ask him to come now and he will help you. Because he's a God who heals all disease. He's a God who heals all disease. He's a God who heals cancer. He's a God who heals migraines. He's a God who heals all body organs. He's a God who heals hearts. He's a God who heals emotions. He's a God who heals you from the past. Your past that has been crowded with failure. He's a God who brings better things. He's a God who wipes away the tears of yesterday. Right now, ask God to wipe away your tears. Ask him to wipe away your tears. Ask him to take away the pain of yesterday. To take away the pain of the past. To take away the afflictions of the past. Because he's a God who's able to do that. He will do it for you. He will do it for you. He will do it for you. Oh, Shrika Setabla Yashika Blaba. And as we worship Him, may your heart be open to Him. A great I am. Thank you for joining us for our study today. We believe that the world of God is alive and new each day. Open your heart and let God speak to you. You can also access our teachings through our Podbean channel. 
or reach us through our website, bibleindepth.com.